You play a little bit of cards, is that right? What do you, what yes, not anything special. I play brag, rummy, a pontoon. Okay. Just with friends or...? With you... just my husband and his friend. Well, a week from now, we're going to enter you in a poker game with some world-class poker players. Oh, no. With the idea that you're going to win quite a lot of money from them. So over the course of the next week... I don't play poker. I know you don't play poker. <laughs> um, but you see, if you did play poker, you'd, you'd have a, a way of playing which would get in the way. I'm going to teach you my way of playing. That's a royal flush. Oh, a royal flush. I teach you the rules of the poker game she'll have to play to world standard next week, namely Texas Hold'em. It's important she doesn't become too stuck on learning the rules at this stage, as they'll get in the way of the psychological techniques I want her to pick up on. Essentially the structure of the game, sort of fairly simple. The fun starts in terms of how you bet. Just before the tournament, I have Anne re-engage with her receptive state. This will increase her ability to read her opponent's body language and get a sense of their cards. Open your eyes, Feel it? Feel nice? Mm. Good. I think that's all. Okay. I finished uh, third in one of the World Series tournaments and got 77,000. Been playing poker uh, off and on since I was uh, 11 years old. Been playing poker? Mm, maybe a week, two weeks. Nick Perso has gone all in. Let's see if this pushes her out. In an attempt to score a big win, Nick bet all his chips on this hand. His aggressive play scared off four out of his five opponents, so it was left to Anne to work out whether he was bluffing or not. She needed to use both her intuition and her observation of his body language. She'd picked up on a tell that made her decide to continue playing and match his large bet. Call it. Or it's Call it. Yeah. She calls. She's called. This was her first big risk. If Anne read him correctly and won this hand, Nick was out of the competition. If she misjudged it, it would have cost her almost all of her chips. So I've got to turn him over? Yeah. Oh, that's not what he wanted to see. It was all down to the turn of the next two cards. Anne would lose if either of these was a queen or a nine. Yeah, a queen or a nine. Not good. Okay, and takes a scalp. But she judged it right and the first professional exited the game. <laughs> Knocks out Nick Pickford's persona. Rang it in. I'm going to go all in. Paul's gone all in. Paul had made a major bluff and bet all his remaining chips. To stay in the game and challenge Paul, Anne would have to bet all of her chips too. Paul was unconsciously giving away subtle signs that Anne found easy to read. Wow, look at Anne's face. Oh, call him, go on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> look at Paul's face. <laughs> oh, he's no, not happy. Not. Please don't call me. Please. She read his bluff correctly, but she's not safe yet. Anne would still lose if any of the dealer's cards were tens or sevens. Six, four, two. And Anne flushing oh, chance oh, yes, oh, in oh. the money. Oh, Thirteen. Oh, oh, thanks for looking up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> With a pair of aces, Anne felt she had a stronger hand than Jeff. And she was right. The odds were massively in her favour. She decided to risk all her chips on this hand in the hope that Jeff would also do the same. All in. I'll call. What? Jeff's called. You maniac. Okay, card saver. Yeah, Anne's gamble seemed to have paid off. She was in a great position to win first prize. Only a nine would stop her. <laughs> I need a nine. Such bad shape. There's only two cards in the deck now that can help him. He's a monster dog. Classic mistake. Used Classic. Oh, oh, poor Anne. Anne had played the hand perfectly. It was just a lucky turn of the card that made Jeff the winner and Anne come in second. And that's it. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> there are three things I noticed about being 33. Failing memory, hair loss, and failing memory. And talking of memory, who better to muck about with than a London cabbie? Hello, thanks. Um, we're doing some filming for Channel 4. Right. Can we get in and bring the cameras? That's right, we need to rig a couple of things up. But... Is that all right? Yeah, of course. Go to the London Eye. Can you London take us around? Yeah. yeah, sure. Is that all right? Thank you. London Eye. Nice, no, it's good to be thank you. It's been such a stupid day. I've had this little toy car with this wheel on it and lost the wheel and was just looking everywhere for this thing, looking everywhere for this stupid little wheel and couldn't find it. It was like right under my nose all the time. You know, you forget like a name or a tune or something like that. 
and you just end up just going round and around and around. You just have not got a clue where it is or what it is. Is this glass, by the way, or is this perspex? It's, it's a perspex. All right, okay. I always thought it was bulletproof glass or something, but... No. What happens if you drive and you just something really obvious, you can't remember where it is? Well, on a very rare occasion... Yeah. You, uh, a bit like now, really, um, you, you kind of like, sort of like, have to hold your hands up and ask where it is you want to go, because, uh, uh, London, London Eye. The London Eye. It's a big wheel thing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, um... Mm. Is it round here somewhere? Because I know this is. Uh... It's near. It's it's near. Um... It's near what? Is, is it near Waterloo Station? Something like that. I don't know to be honest. It's that. It's that. Big it's somewhere around... thing. Isn't yeah, it? that's right. It's just on the Thames somewhere, isn't it? The big river. London Eye. London Eye. So what's this area here? Where are we here? We're now in the South Bank. I'm sure it's on the South Bank somewhere, isn't it? I, don't, I mean, I don't really know. I don't. You know London a lot better than I do. I'm not really sure. I'll get out. I'm sure I can find it. Here you are. Excellent. Cheers. We'll, we'll walk from here. So you reckon it's around here somewhere? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's around here somewhere. Call it a tenner. Thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks ever so much. An average to good chess player normally would think about two or three moves ahead in a game. A chess grandmaster can think anything up to 20 moves ahead. In the next room, I've got nine of the country's top chess players. Some of them are rising stars on the circuit. Uh, there's an international masters in there, and not one, but four world-rated grandmasters. I'm going to play chess with them all simultaneously. My chess is very good, obviously nowhere near as good as your standards, but I've spent a year planning this. And during that time, I've been reading transcripts and been trying to familiarize myself with your games. Okay, um, I'm going to give this, what's your name? Graham, Graham Lee. Graham. I'm going to ask you just to hang on to that for a second. Have you got an inside pocket you I could put that in? That would be superb. And uh, hang on to that. I'll ask sure, you for that at the see. end. Terrific, thank you. I'm going to ask you all to take a seat then. Your names are on the table, so please uh, find your place. Off you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and expertise today. The results of that, I guess, were I won at four tables, lost at three, and then drew against the other two. So that technically would be, uh, would be a win for me against you as a group. And that's beating two grandmasters. I'm, I'm delighted. Well, uh, Vince and I are, are part of a group of UFO researchers. It's been together for about 35 years. Mm -hmm. I started in 1957 with the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, which was called NICAP. And then in, in 1965, when the first uh, abductee, you know, uh, claim came in, I investigated that together with other members of NICAP. So you both have quite a high profile in this, uh, in this area, and you've written, how many books have you written now? Uh, I've written uh, five books. Uh, after my abduction, it, essentially what it is that I seem to be able to tell people their medical background and their medical history, sometimes their current medical state. If one of you comes and touches me on the back, it might be interesting also if you don't even let me know which one of you is touching me. Oh, OK. OK, just mm -hmm. it might make it more interesting. Um, and if you just place your hands on the small of my back and just be patient, because sometimes it takes a little while. It's different with different people. Um, okay. I'll, I'll also have my eyes closed as I'm doing it, so um, I won't be able to see um, so don't please don't don't say anything out loud so I don't know who's I don't know who's coming up um. okay I've got my eyes closed so OK, you're having real difficulty sleeping at the moment. Um, and I don't know if this is Vince or Anne, but you're having real difficulty sleeping. Uh, there's something in your throat, or that has been in your throat. 
<coughs> a, ch uh, a tumor or a something that was in your throat. I don't, I don't, my actual anatomical knowledge is not great, but a, a gland or something in, in the throat there that was, and this, but this would have been ages ago, but something up there, and there's, um, I'm going to turn around and look at you if that's all right. Oh, okay. Um, I think you have, um, I think you don't take, or you really try not to take, uh, dr um, like ch uh, chemical uh, prescriptive drugs. I think maybe you, you use more sort of herbal or, or um, you know, non-drug based remedies because there's a real, uh, almost if I'm shaking, I, um, but a real sense of, of, of purity almost. And, and I think that you had some minor heart problems, but again, nothing. I think you're in very good health actually, but uh, yeah, but that was very clear here in the throat and and that you've been having real difficulty sleeping for some time but the thing in the throat was years ago i mean literally decades ago it's not mm -hmm. not recent is that remotely remotely it's exactly 